Exercise is a powerful medicine, video number six. Take home message five. It is use it or lose it. The importance of exercising regularly, preferably every day. Is this a dogma based on weak data or there are solid scientific data to support the statement that we should exercise every day or at least every other day and why. Okay, so in the previous video, uh, I explained that uh, regular exercise endurance training is super powerful in uh, reducing body weight and visceral fat. Again, this is a study we did at Washington University with John Holodzy and other colleagues. These people, they've been exercising for a year at 70% uh, of maximal heart rate, six days a week uh, for an hour every day. And uh, uh, as you can see here, we got a result. Uh, we got an 8% weight loss and 74%, 74% visual fat reduction. Beautiful results. So we know that when you have a reduction in uh, both subcutaneous uh, abdominal fat, but particularly visceral fat, uh, this translates into a major shift change in uh, adipokines. Basically, the adipocytes shrink because uh, we, uh, uh, the body is using the fuel uh, in fat, the triglycerides, to generate uh, substrates for ATP production and therefore the adipocytes becoming, they are becoming smaller. And as they become smaller, there is a change in several adipokines. There is a reduction in leptin, there is an increase in adiponectin, there is a powerful uh, insulin sensitizer hormone, there is a reduction in resistance, there is a reduction in circulating free fatty acids and prostaglandins and many other factors. And, in particular, there is a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-60 and alpha and many other ones. Uh, now, these translate, as I explained in the previous couple of videos, in an improvement in, uh, uh, in glucose tolerance. So basically, uh, with exercise, as you can see here in green before, and then one year after this uh, uh, endurance exercise, uh, uh, let me repeat, one hour a day, six days a week at 70% of max heart rate. As you can see here, glucose fasting, uh, 30, 60, 90, 120 minutes after a glucose load is markedly improved as it is improved the insulin production, much less insulin production to keep glucose much lower than before. So these people are more insulin, more insulin sensitive and of course they markedly improve their glucose metabolism. So again, this is in part due to the reduction in body fat, in visceral fat, but there is also another reason why exercise is super powerful and more powerful than diet color restriction, dietary color restriction. And it is because of the uh, overexpression of GLUT4. GLUT4 is a glucotransporter that uh, allows glucose uh, to enter from the plasma, from the blood into the cells and GLUT4 uh, production and translocation on the cell membrane is triggered by two factors. One is insulin and the other one is exercise. Half an hour of exercise is sufficient to, to uh, increase GLUT4 concentration, as you can see here, and uh, to uh, um, and translocation. So that's good. 
It means you know that you know if you exercise for every now half an hour, you have this uh, booster, this this booster in, in increasing glut four that drives glucose into your cells. The bad news is that uh, in several studies in animals and humans, like this one by John Holozy, a group. Uh, 40 hours of detraining is enough to uh, uh, basically nullify the uh, exercise ex effect on, 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 uh, on glucose, on GLUT4 uh, translocation, meaning that if you don't exercise at least every other day, you are losing the acute beneficial effects of exercise in uh, uh, promoting uh, insulin sensitivity and uh, reducing uh, glucose levels uh, and therefore preventing prediabetes and diabetes. Just to reinforce this concept, let me show you this study, again done by John Holodzy with Rogers as a first author. So they studied athletes, uh, master athletes that were exercising regularly here in black and uh, John and Rogers asked these people to stop exercising, to detraining for 10 days. And they measure the uh, glucose levels and insulin levels in response to a glucose load before, so when they were exercising and after 10 days of detraining. And as you can see here, 10 days of detraining in these master athletes that they didn't gain weight and visceral fat in 10 days, but the GLUT4, uh, the lack of the GLUT4 uh, beneficial effects was responsible for a worsening of glucose tolerance and a doubling of insulin levels at 30, 60, 120 minutes after the glucose load. So again, let me reinforce the concept of today, the take, home, the take home message. You should exercise every day, preferably, or at least every other day, so that you are not losing the beneficial effects of exercise training on GLUT4 production and translocation of the cell membrane that makes glucose entering into your cells. Of course, uh, there are different ways after exercise to keep glucose, GLUT4 uh, uh, expression on the cell membrane. One is to avoid <clears throat> uh, glycogen supercompensation by uh, refraining from eating carbs as soon as you uh, stop exercising. Again, if you're an athlete, you eat carbs because you want to replay, uh, replenish the uh, glycogen in the skeletal muscle through the GLUT4 mechanisms called uh, glycogen supercompensation. But for example, if you want to lose weight and you, if you want to improve your glucose tolerance, insulin sensitivity, probably it's better you know, not to immediately eat carbohydrates, but eat more fatty foods and uh, we're going to discuss about it maybe in another video. Anyway, thank you for listening. As always, um, I'll see you next time.